You know, at this point, I'm, I'm just starting to feel bad for Firefox. Firefox, for the longest time, has been my daily driver when it comes to general web browsing. I only use it, I use the sync features, but so much has gone wrong with Firefox in the last couple of years. It's, it's just, I really hope the project succeeds and turns around, but it's really not looking that way at the moment. In the last three years, Firefox has lost 46 million users, that is a chunk of people, and overall it's, it's just not going in the right direction. And even Linux distributions now are starting to replace Firefox as the default web browser with something else. And one of the go-tos that it seems like, other than like base Chromium, seems to be Vivaldi. Before today, I really only knew about one Linux distribution that used Vivaldi as the default web browser, and that was Farron OS. If you're interested in checking that out, you could click on the little I or check the link in the description. But now, Manjaro Cinnamon is launching or coming with Vivaldi as their default web browser. And that is a big change compared to what we're used to. This is the web browser right here. I have Manjaro Cinnamon loaded up in a virtual machine. So in this video, we're gonna be checking out the web browser. And the thing is, Manjaro is a very popular Linux distribution of all the Arch, well, Arch-based Linux distros. It's definitely up there in terms of overall popularity. And they haven't done this on any of their official releases yet. This is their Cinnamon edition, so it's technically a community release. But I think what their main goal is right now is they're kind of dipping their toes in the water to switch out Firefox with something else like this. And to be completely honest, after using it for a little bit, and I have used it off and on for about a while, it is ultimately a better web browser than Firefox. And even working with something like this versus Firefox when it comes to Linux development, especially when it comes to theming, decorations, and things like that, Firefox is not very friendly. When it comes to developing with qt and gtk and things like that the only situation where i've seen firefox actually look good which ironically happens to be a manjaro distro their gnome edition they've really done a good job integrating like tabs within the title bar and things like that but what i'm going to do real quick is i'm going to pull in here the actual announcement this now is the uh, a firefox web browser this is the actual announcement for the uh, manjaro cinnamon 21.1.2 shipping with vivality and there's a link on their actual website as well. If I open that up, you can see it announced here, uh, Vivality plus Manjaro. And this web browser has done really good integrating well within the Linux ecosystem. There's good themes, good privacy support. There's built-in ad blocking. And really there's a ton of different customizations and tools within this web browser. And you can see here on the announcement page, them going over some, some of these things, such as the media focusing, the little side panel, mobile websites, uh, the synchronization, the huge amount of options when it comes to the tabs, the theming and themes are beautiful. I think the default red is really ugly, which we'll check that out in just a sec. But you can see they have a new Manjaro uh, cinnamon theme that's built into that. And overall, just the settings that you have are absolutely endless. So if I go ahead and let's get rid of this real quick. So let's slide this out and up and over. This is the web browser. So it says, how much volatility do you want? We have classic, essentials, or fully loaded. So the classic, uh, the only thing that this this includes is mail, calendar, and feeds, which so built in mail clients and things like that. Or if you just do essentials, it removes panels, status bar, and fast forward rewind. For this, let's go fully loaded so we could check everything out here and continue. So right now, import other applications or files. I haven't really done anything and it's the only web browser. Here, this is nice. It lets you select if you want to block ads out of the gate. Uh, me, I don't use an ad blocker because it would be moderately hypocritical for me because my main job uh, involves or how I get paid primarily is by Google AdSense. So I don't like to uh, block ads on YouTube because then I'm taking away from other content creators. So personally, I never turn on an ad blocker. But what's cool about this is if you're on a website that's absolutely ruined because of the advertisements, uh, you could go up here and change this really easily by just content blocker manage settings. Uh, if I go continue here and click that again, actually go to manage settings, you can see it opens up a page here. You can set exemptions. So for example, if I wanted to uh, block all ads, I could add a exemption for YouTube, which is something I'm probably going to end up doing. That's just one of the options and we'll go more into that in just a little bit. 
Uh, right here, we have the theming. We have the use system operating theme, which is what it's doing. If I deselect that and click this, for example, this is that traditional red theme that I really do not like. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my operating system theme and continue here. It's gonna allow me to select my tab positioning. So we're let's just stick with top, that's what we're all used to. So continue, and they have some tools. So we have the notes, web panels, and tab tiling. So within this web browser, you can actually tile your tabs like you would in kind of a tiling window manager. But what I think is really cool is this web panels. So if I go over here, this is gonna give me a tutorial on how to use that and where it is, how to access it and things like that. But it's just over here. You can see right now the default is a Wikipedia one. So if I go to the Wikipedia tab, it's gonna open up Wikipedia in this mobile browser friendly format. And I can easily add one. So I want to add a web panel. Let's say we wanted to add just Twitter. So we could go ahead and add that. And now it's gonna open up the mobile version of Twitter. And I could adjust this here as I see fit. So then I could be doing something over here and with a click of a button, open up Twitter on the side and be able to interact with that and do other things at the same time. Overall, it's awesome. Additionally, you saw right here, they have notes, which is this button right here. So you have a note taking application built into the web browser. And then over here, we have some basic things like bookmarks or downloads and everything is managed kind of in the side panel. So it won't really take you to a full page. You get to Stay doing what you're doing while you're interacting with the features of the web browser. Additionally, we have history. We have those notes right here. We have a window. So if I go ahead and click on that, it's going to allow me to manage my tabs and things like that. If I right click on a tab, this is where it gets really crazy. You can reload tabs, uh, clone tabs, pin tabs, move tabs, and do periodic reload, which I like this because like a lot of the times if you are on a bank website where you can view all your accounts, banking information, a lot of the times they'll have a, like a 15 minute timer, so it will automatically log you out. But sometimes I like to just have that open. So do like a five minute periodic reload will keep that account open and active. So that's something that is awesome. And you have a lot more options like mute tab, bookmark tab, hibernate, close, customize, bunch of different things here. And that's the primary features for that. Um, if I go to a web page down here on the bottom, we can see we have a little uh, picture, which so I can capture the entire page as a screenshot. And you have options here. So full page, just a selection. You can save it as a PNG, JPEG, copy to clipboard, tons of different options. And being that this is a Chromium based web browser, you can share profiles between different Chromium based web browsers such as Ed, uh, Edge, Google Chrome itself. And of course you can use all the different Chrome extensions on this, which there is a huge, huge opportunities when it comes to what you can actually do with this, with those Chrome extensions. So if I did this tiling and I did like tile horizontally, for example, you can see I have my bottom page here and then this is what was open, so I could finish that up. And then I have all these, so then I could go to a website, for example. Uh, I don't really want to go to any of these. Let's go to Manjaro, the Manjaro form. And then you have that tiling, <laughs> tiling web browser within one web browser. If I go up here with this tabbing thing, I could drag and dra drag it around to change it. Um, honestly, I don't know all the functionalities and use cases of this. I haven't used this too much, but it's going to be fun to actually learn how to use this. And you can see up here, if I switch in between the tabs, it's changing what's selected. So if I want to close one of these out, I can just close out this Manjaro Linux and it's gonna bring it this open. So then we can kind of check what's new and it's gonna talk about on this website, the tab stacking, uh, playing ultra cool command chains, rollier commands, things like that. There's really, uh, if I went over everything that this web browser can do, this would be a 30, 40 minute video. Uh, but what we are going to do real quick is jump into the settings. So if we go down here, we have a little gear icon. Uh, one thing I didn't bring up is over here. You can actually hide the panel. Right here we have take a break. So this will basically pause all your media. You could tap that, go do something else. Set a keyboard shortcut for that. So that's awesome. So if you have like other tabs with like YouTube videos playing in the background for music, do a little command shortcut and it will pause everything in your web browser. Uh, additionally, you have the syncing functionality, and then over here you have your mail client. I'm not gonna get into the mail client, but I'm really excited to actually check that out and connect my mail to it and see how good it is. But what's real crazy here is settings. I'm gonna zoom in actually real quick. Let's uh, try to properly do this without screwing up the scaling too bad. So right about there, uh, close enough. Over here we have general, so there's 
all the basic general settings you'd expect in a web browser and a heck of a lot more. So we have the, your default web browser, your startup page, all that. Under appearance here, you can customize every single aspect of your web browser, where everything is, where all the buttons are. Under themes, we saw we had that Manjaro cinnamon, but you have others to choose from here. So for example, if I bring this so you guys can kind of see the themes change, we have our dark, we have our human, and this one's kind of more of like an Ubuntu type theme, so this is something I might use over on that. Uh, we have hot pink here, and you could change your background too, what the default background is. And there's all kinds of categories, so custom, you can add your own picture obviously, but we have animals, shapes, all kinds of things. And you could really get into everything, the color adjustment, the opacity, everything. You have your start page customization, your tabs, your actual panel settings, what is and is not enabled, what your address bar can do, your bookmarks, your quick commands. There is just a whole heck of a lot of things that you can do. So I'm actually really excited that they decided to go with this web browser over Firefox uh, because it's just so, it's much more functional and there's a lot more that you could do with it. And it's easier to work with from a developer standpoint. Everything is very readable. For example, if you use Firefox themes, it's really a hit or miss on if it's actually gonna look good or not. There's just a whole lot to it. And this is, like I said, shipping on Manjaro Cinnamon, and that's what we're in right now. Cinnamon is a wonderful desktop environment. You probably know Cinnamon is the desktop environment that's built for Linux Mint. And you can see it's using just about 900 megabytes of RAM, and that's after having Vivality opened up for a little bit and closing it. Uh, so it seems to be less system or resource intensive than Firefox, so that is nice. I know on my primary system, Firefox uses a whole heck of a lot of RAM. So that's basically the gist of this video. I do hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, Vivality, it may ship on these two Linux distributions right now, but you can install it on just about anything in the world. Uh, it's definitely worth checking out, especially if you're somebody who's using something like Firefox, Chrome, Edge, or even Brave. I'm not really a fan of Brave, kind of for the reasons I talked about earlier, but in my opinion, Brave is even worse because they'll still run ads on pages and basically skim money from content creators. So that's not really a good look for me. Brave runs good and all that, but uh, I'm just not a fan of some of their philosophies of how they decide to make money. Speaking of money, support, donations, things like that, I would like to thank the people who support me over on YouTube, well, for YouTube memberships, and uh, Patreon. You guys are awesome. Mitchell Valentino, Phil Mac, Timo, Anthony, and Kyle. You guys are some of the top tier Patreon supporters, and I do thank you all very much for that. I would also like to thank all the other Techie and Techie Plus members. Everybody's support is truly humbling. I do thank you all so much for that. With all that said, if you're interested in trying out this web browser or Manjaro Cinnamon, the links will be down in the description below. With all of that said, I hope I desperately hope you all have a beautiful day and goodbye. <laughs>